Hello, my name is Ron Vale. I'm a scientist at the University of California, San Francisco, an investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And this short video is for teachers and parents, and I'd like to introduce you to this website for digital microscopy for elementary school children. And in this video, I hope to at least show you what you can do with these microscopes and entice you to try some of these activities with um, your children. Uh, so first of all, maybe I should just introduce a little bit what I do. Uh, we have in our laboratory a number of very fancy microscopes. And with these microscopes, we're trying to learn how cells move and how cells divide. And with these kinds of microscopes, we can make movies such as you'll see over here. This is a movie of a cell dividing. And in red here, uh, you can see the DNA. And the DNA is splitting apart, segregating to create two new daughter cells. So what do we do as scientists? Well, although we have very fancy microscopes, a lot of what we do is simply use our eyes and brains to be good observers of a process and then try to make deductions and hypotheses of what's going on. Now, these same activities, I argue, can also go, go on at uh, the elementary school level. Um, and that's what I'd like to share with you uh, in this website. So, of course, at elementary school, we have to teach our kids some facts about science. But in addition to this diet of facts, kids should get a taste of what it's like to make scientific discoveries. And in addition, uh, they need to learn that to make scientific d discoveries, they need to be good observers of the world around them. And um, I also believe that kids at this age, at the elementary school level, are a perfect age group. At this age, kids are natural uh, scientists. They're natural observers. Um, and this is a perfect time to introduce them uh, to science and to observation. And as a tool for this, in this website, I'll introduce to you uh, this microscope over here. Um, now, this microscope uh, looks maybe different from microscopes that you used when uh, you were in school. First of all, there's no eyepieces here. This is a digital microscope. And instead of looking at the object with your eye, there's a, a camera over here that then through this cable here, we'll transfer the image uh, to your computer. Now, why use this kind of microscope as opposed to one of the older um, ocular microscopes? Now, there's several reasons uh, why this microscope is a great tool at the elementary school level. Uh, so first of all, um, kids uh, can use this microscope as a group, and they can look at the images together. So, of course, you remember the old ocular microscopes when you were looking through that eyepiece and never sure if you were looking at your own eyelash or the specimen. And even if you did find the specimen, it was hard to share what you were looking at with your fellow students or teachers. But here with this digital microscope, the image goes to a computer screen that all the kids can share together. And that makes this, uh, this much more interactive and, and fun for the kids. Second of all, uh, this digital microscope is relatively inexpensive. At $80, it's possible for school to buy several of them so that kids uh, can do the exercises themselves working in groups here. And although this microscope is only $80, I should add that many of the features of this microscope, uh, the software and its capability of taking pictures or, or even time-lapse movies are very similar to the much more expensive research microscopes uh, that we have in our laboratory. So in many ways, this microscope is very much uh, state of the art in, uh, in science. Um, and also, the images that are taken with this microscope can also be saved in iPhoto, uh, or as QuickTime movies, or as iMovie. So uh, this works very well with other technologies uh, that the kids are learning in their school. And I also sh should add that kids are very computer savvy these days. And in 10 minutes, they can fully understand how to use uh, this digital microscope. So in this website, um, I describe a number of different exercises that we've done with elementary school children at, um, at Bel Air uh, Elementary School. But this just gives you an overview of the kinds of images that can be taken with this microscope. 
So first of all, uh, kids can learn through this microscope that their, the world, their everyday world around them is made up of uh, smaller units and they can learn how these objects are built. So for example, at low magnification, here's a butterfly wing familiar to us all, but we go to higher magnification and higher magnification still, we can see that these colors in the butterfly wing are made up of these repeating pattern of different colored scales. Or even going to a very familiar object like a newspaper or a magazine, when you look under the microscope, these pictures they can see are made up of different colored dots that give rise to the image that they see uh, in, in, in print and they can understand how printing is, uh, is uh, generated. Um, kids at fifth grade learn about cells, but it's very different reading about a cell and seeing one yourself under the microscope. What can be cooler? So here are some cells from uh, a, a, an onion. This is an exercise that you can read about on our website. Or the kids can even take some cells from their cheek and look at their own cells under the microscope. In addition, besides biology, this microscope can be used in other kinds of science. For example, material or earth science. Here are some crystals, different uh, crystals. One is real sugar, the other is artificial sugar. And kids under the microscope can tell the difference between these different crystals. Or here's a volcanic rock. Um, also, the microscope can be used to make movies. So for example, here is uh, Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate. And they can uh, put these, uh, the salt and watch crystal growth by time-lapse microscopy under the microscope and see actually how crystals uh, form. Uh, very familiar objects in their world. For example, Velcro. All kids know about Velcro. They have it on their shoes and other clothing. Um, but here under the microscope they can see how it works. For example, here at relatively low mag they can see the two sides of the Velcro. But if they go at even higher magnification, they can see that one side is made of these hooks and then the other side is made of these tangle of fibers. And they, from looking at this, they can deduce that, ah, this is how Velcro sticks together. These hooks have to uh, uh, get trapped in all these fibers and that's how the two sides uh, stick together. In addition, some of the teachers at Bel Air tried the microscope in other non, even non-science elements of the curriculum. For example, history, math, and money, where kids at the third grade level are learning about money. Uh, some of the teachers decided to have the kids look at money under the microscope. And there are cool things to find here. For example, here's the Lincoln penny. And on the back, on the tail side, there is Mr. Lincoln uh, sitting in his memorial. And here's a little spider that's found in one corner of the $1 bill. So this makes learning about money and uh, the presidents on the money and so forth a lot of fun for the kids. It can also be used even uh, uh, imaginatively for other things like language arts. So here are a bunch of leaves uh, taken by a, a fourth grade student who then went and wrote uh, a haiku on the images that she took under uh, the microscope here. So there's a lot of creativity of how the microscope can be used and how the images can be used. And even uh, a lot of the images that these kids are going to take are fantastically beautiful. And here is just a whole collection of images here. Um, and these images can be used in other kinds of uh, digital art or calendars or many other activities. So there's a lot of creativity. In this website I describe some activities that uh, have been put together. Try to make them as easy as possible for teachers to pick up on the microscope and these activities and try them. But there's a lot of creativity that can go on as well. Even spontaneous creativity of letting kids try their own experiments uh, with this microscope in the classroom. And mainly what they should learn from all of this is that science is a lot of fun. And I think that's what uh, these microscopes also give uh, teachers and the students. So thank you. Uh, please try things in this uh, website and um, have fun with the kids in your class.